Hey art folks, it's Shade, and today I'm going to talk to you about the trois crayons technique. What is au trois crayons? It is a French phrase which means in three pencils. Now I know you're thinking crayons, aren't those those things that we used in elementary school? Well, the French word crayon does actually refer to those, but it also refers to pencils. It's kind of any mark making tool, particularly one for writing or drawing where pigment is mixed with clay or wax into a long stick-like shape. And crayons from school are actually just that, pigment plus wax, except it's a little tiny bit of pigment and a whole lot of wax. And that is basically how we describe our modern pencils, because pencils used to be made out of pure graphite, but Mushu Conte actually made what we know as the modern pencil with the different gradations HB, B, 2B, etc. in 1974 by mixing it with clay. And he also used the same sort of method for inventing the Conte crayon. So what's the big deal about using three pencils? Well, let's just start from using one pencil. I think most people would just call this drawing. In this type of drawing, you use graphite or charcoal or some kind of black or dark pencil on normally white paper. The white of the paper serves as the highlight and your job is to draw in the darkness. People can, of course, get lovely, rich, deeply valued tones in this method, but all you're doing is putting in the deeper shades. This is even less known than au trois crayons, this is du crayon. This is another monochromatic drawing technique, just like the regular drawing. Du crayon, you can probably guess, means two pencils, generally white and black. And this is cool because now you really get to play with values. You get to use the white to put in your highlights, and you get to use the black to put in your shadows, and you use the tone of the paper for your midtones. And that is a really great way to get to learn how to really punch in those shadows and highlights in a painting or a drawing. I feel like when I see drawings done in this technique, they look like they have this kind of amazing form and 3D feel to them. One artist who is well known for using this technique is Pierre-Paul Proudhon. Most of the artists that we're going to talk about during this time period are from the 18th century. And he made these just really beautiful, almost colorful drawings just using these two pencils. Okay, and now for the moment of truth. Trois crayons three pencils. Now we are no longer monochromatic. The addition of the red color means that we are not only working with value, but also temperature. So the three pencils in Eau Trois Crayon are black, white, and sanguine. Because it opens the door to color temperature, it is a perfect technique for quick portraits or other studies. I kind of consider this the Zorn palette for pencils. You can make some really surprisingly lifelike and quote unquote colorful drawings just from using these three colors. Sometimes I look at drawings made with these three colors and I cannot believe that they are only made from those three. And there were many famous artists who put this technique to good work. The person who is thought to have made this technique popular to begin with is Peter Paul Rubens. His drawing of Isabella Brandt is extremely famous and probably one of the most well-known examples of this technique. For me, I learned about this technique from Jean-Antoine Watteau, whose drawings are so delicate and full of light. And then there is also François Boucher, who makes these really solid drawings of women using the technique. As I said, there are three parts. The first part is white. That white is generally chalk. 
You can, of course, use anything that you want, but traditionally, white in this technique is white chalk. Then after that, things get a little bit more complicated. So the black is traditionally pied noir or black chalk. So you can get pied noir from Conte, but I have heard that this version is a little too whirly and I'm not really sure that if it's possible to get the sort of black chalk that these 18th century artists might have used because resources of this material have been basically extinguished. The third color, the red, the sanguine, is where I had the most difficulty because I didn't want to use just straight pastels and I really would have liked to have used real sanguine but apparently it is extremely difficult to get real sanguine these days. There are a few retailers that still sell it including Zechi, Pigment Tokyo, and at least the last time I checked Cornelson's in London but I think that supply is dwindling very quickly. Whatever you get to use as your red, make sure that it is the same type of pencil or pastel as your other colors. The first set that I bought had a black charcoal, white chalk, and an oil-based sanguine, which meant that I could not layer on top of my sanguine with my other two chalks, and that kind of ruins the entire technique. Lyra is one of the few brands that I have seen that makes a sanguine without oil added. All of the Conte products have a bit of oil and or clay added to them, but at least they are consistent so they will layer well. The Conte sketching box is a great way to start with this because you get both the pencils and also the square sticks in a range of colors and darknesses. The Lyra Special Sketching Set also is great for this technique because you get the three colors as well as an extra dark black and some other sketching tools to play with. You could also use any pastels or even color pencils, but if you use color pencils, you're not going to get the same smudging ability. By the way, if you do get these pastel pencils, you might notice that they are too big to fit in most standard sharpeners, so you will probably have to sharpen them by hand. And I was really confused about this, so I thought I would tell you the method for doing it. You hold the pencil in one hand, and with the other hand you take a blade. You don't actually push with the hand holding the blade, but you push with the thumb of the hand holding the pencil and you don't go down really steep, you really take a small amount off and you just kind of turn the pencil a whole bunch while you're going around doing this until the whole thing is sharpened. And you're also going to want to sharpen a pretty large amount of the lead away because that allows you to use not only the tip but also the side of the pencil. Most people would like to get it pretty sharp and it's a lot easier to do that if you use some sandpaper. I recommend getting a wider strip of sandpaper than I have here, but that's going to help you smooth down any ridges and get it nice and sharp. So finally, how in the world do you actually draw in this technique? What I love about it is that it really simplifies your thinking. You have your black and that is going to provide you your cold values and also your dark tones. Then your sanguine is going to provide mid-tones, either lighter or darker depending on the lightness or darkness of your paper, and warm tones. That's what gives these drawings their lifelike feeling. And then your white is going to give you your highlights. So you have not only value in the light and a dark with white and black, but you also have a warm and a cool with the black and the sanguine. You can also vary your pressure on these different 
colors to get different gradations and I think it is a good idea if you've never tried this technique before to start out with making a little tonal chart going all the way from black with heavy pressure being the darkest, working your way through to sanguine and then ending with white with the heaviest pressure as your lightest, brightest highlights. So to start actually drawing, some people say that traditionally you should use black for your outlines and start out with your shadows, but honestly it's a little intimidating. So I like to start with the sanguine and start just plotting in those warmed areas. Then after that, I definitely go in and punch in my darks and finally put in lights on top. Then it's just moving around and adjusting. What needs to be warmer? What needs to be cooler? What needs to be darker? Where do you want harder edges? Where do you want softer edges? You don't have to cover up the entire paper. You can definitely leave a lot of the paper bare and actually I think that's a really cool look. So don't feel compelled to just pile on there when you don't need to. And depending on the medium that you're using, you can use a blending stop or a brush to get you that super soft, smooth effect. Honestly, I think working with this technique is probably a great idea for any drawer or any painter because it really helps you to focus only on values and temperature, which are the two most important parts of painting almost any subject. I'll have some links in the description below about different people talking about this technique and a Pinterest board that seems to be totally full of different examples of trois crayons. I hope that this was really fun and informative. Also, all of these photos are from volunteers on my Instagram page. If you want to know when I ask for photos in the future, definitely follow me over there. Just might end up getting painted or drawn. Thank you so much to my patrons. I've just been having so much fun preparing. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time. And until then, be gentle with yourself. Bye.